You may have seen this pocket hole jig in some of my early project videos. In this episode of Today's Craftsman, Jeff will show you how to make this pocket hole jig and he'll go through all the details so you can make one for your shop. Welcome back to the shop. I'm Jeff from Today's Craftsman. And if you tuned in last week, you know that we, um, we covered push to connect fittings and these pneumatic uh, clamps and foot pedals and all these different things that you can uh, use to set up jigs in your shop. So you may have seen this in some of John's videos. This is an old school Craig jig. Um, and unfortunately they don't make these anymore. This has a pneumatic cylinder here with a, a foot actuated clamp. And they don't make this, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how you can make your own. We already cut some pieces up, and we'll show you how we put it together. First step to our process here is we need to connect these two pieces that we've cut. So we have our base here, this is where our clamp is gonna sit, and this is the, the vertical block that is gonna have the, the guide holes in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a, uh, a dado, the same width as the thickness of this piece, and it'll sit in there halfway give us a nice strong joint with some glue and a couple screws from underneath. Here's a trick for making well-fitting dados. I'm gonna use the piece that will be inside of the dado up against my fence, and I'm gonna to touch my piece to it. I can take a pass here, take a pass up against the fence, hog out the middle, and this should fit perfectly. Doesn't work. Because of the thickness of the blade. As you can see, it's a perfect fit. <laughs> so you see, that'll that'll fit in there perfectly. Just a little bit of uh, type on three, and it'll be right in there. Uh, turns out I was mistaken. We're not accounting for the thickness of the blade there. So uh, we're just going to set the fence one inch to the blade make our first cut and we'll, we'll make multiple passes until we get a good fit, so. We have the bit in the jig here and I'm using a T-bevel to just figure out roughly what this angle is. And then we'll go over to the miter saw and uh, put this there and we'll, we'll round it to the closest one that seems correct. So it looks like, to me, it looks like 15 degrees. So we checked it here on the miter saw, locked right in at 15. So we're gonna cut a couple uh, scraps here to use as shims basically on the drill press. We're getting ready to drill this piece for real, and we did a test piece first. So this isn't something you want to just jump into without trying it. So we, um, we made a test piece, drilled this at 15 degrees, and you can see we're drilling a nice hole, but we're coming out a little bit off center. Um, so what we're going to do on this one is actually move these holes back about 3 30 seconds of an inch so that we're hitting dead center on three quarter plywood. And just like the uh, actual jig, before we drill this one, we're gonna cut that bevel on the top. So we'll cut a 15 degree bevel. That way our stop collar here bottoms out flat, you know, when we're drilling in the jig. We have the the plywood shims that we cut up against this 90 degree fence that we built. And I'm just gonna screw these to these blocks. That way it's nice and solid. Now we can hit these points, drill through until this bit comes out of the other side.
All right, let's see. Let's see what we did. There you go. That's much better. This is the one, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, that's, that's much better. So we just need to adjust the, uh, the depth a little bit, I think, on the stop collar. It should be good to go. Cool, yeah, because look how deep you went down into this. Yeah. We're going to put this together now, so we'll just use some glue. I'm using Type Bond Quick and Thick uh, just because I want this to dry pretty fast. Uh, so we'll put some glue in here and we're going to tack it together with some 18 gauge brad nails and then we'll screw uh, with some screws to hold it together. So nice and easy. Okay. If you're a woodworker like me, you wipe the glue on the underside of your bench. We can wipe that glue off and uh, it will give it a couple minutes to dry. Our glue is all set up and we actually tested this out to make sure that everything was working in terms of the angle and everything. Um, last step is to attach the pneumatic clamp and run the air to it. You can see we have these threaded areas on this clamp and we need to put the push to connect fittings in there. So these already have a bit of a, like a Teflon sealant on there. You can thread these in and tighten them up. Right. Now we can screw this down. So we have a pretty long throw on this. Um, I don't think we're ever going to be drilling something this thin, but we might as well have the ability to drill something really thick. So if we keep this, you know, say a quarter inch away from there, we can screw this down and we'll have a lot of uh, adjustability in terms of thickness. As you can see, we're all clamped to the bench and our air is hooked up. If you watch the last video, you'll notice that we have um, the cylinder working in the opposite fashion. So it's always open and you just change that by swapping out these uh, air hoses. So when we press the pedal, it will clamp. Let's try it out. We can put in our piece, clamp it down, drill a couple holes. There you go. There we go, not bad. That's actually nice and flush. We could adjust the stop collar on the drill bit a little bit to make it go just a hair deeper. As you can see, we, uh, we have just a little bit of the, the washer head of the screw sticking out. So if we went a little bit deeper, it would fit. So it's a pretty easy way to make a pocket hole jig. And I think the, the pneumatically actuated foot pedal is like probably the best upgrade that you can have on a pocket hole machine. Like we said, they don't make this Craig jig anymore. Um, so really the only way to do it is to do it yourself. So let us know if you'd like to see a more in-depth video. Maybe we'll, we'll do a version two and improve on it and put out some plans. But if you have any other questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below and we'll see you next week.